Good boy, Chase. Hey, buddy. We're just hanging out here, pal. Whoa. I think right now, Slinky hears us. Oh, look at this guy. Slinky actually hears me talking and wants to see what's going on. And that's the kind of relationship I want from all of my moms. We've got to spend the time, and that's what it boils down to, guys, is I have not spent the time just interacting with the animals. Just giving them a little love one-on-one -on -one with me. What do you mean? Whoa, he, oh, he is such an awesome person. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm hanging out here with Lulu. And um, I was so inspired by what I saw at Tom's place. And I just really wanted to spend more time with her and show you guys how I try to uh, warm up to my lizards. And that's what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to see if we can get her to stop hissing and see if I'd be able to give her a little pet here in a little bit. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennett. This week's shout out goes to Chris Crocker. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. All right, everyone, so we're hanging out here. Here's Lulu. Now, I got her from my friend Alejandro Milo, and uh, basically he told me that this was a very tame animal. Now, they were kept indoors, and anytime you take a lizard or mostly lizard or snake or something like that and put it outdoors, it kind of resets them. Once they get that ultraviolet radiation, when they feel that sun, natural sunlight, um, they just tend to kind of revert into a more primal state. So you got to start all over again. Now, we've had to put hands on her because I had to move her out of her temporary enclosure into this custom cages uh, enclosure. And then also I had to keep hands on her to bring her in from the cold a few weeks ago. So she's not happy with me because she perceives me as being a pain in the neck. Every time I get in here, I gotta do something with her. But we're just gonna open the lid, as you can see here, of her hide box. She's been laying on that uh, heating pad. And I just wanna put myself in proximity with her. Just kinda hang out with her. And she's telling me everything I need to know. She's not happy at the moment. Um, her tail's probably curled up. I can't see. Can you see, Matt? Is her tail curled up a little bit? I can't really see. I don't want to move over her uh, and then keep her a little, a little bit cool, curled up. That's yeah, all that non-verbal. going underneath the heat pad. Gotcha. It's all that non-verbal communication. So she's she's a little nervous. But let's see if we can, in real time here, in a video, just kind of relax and kind of see if she'll become our friend. Now croc monitors are native to Papua New Guinea and they are notorious uh, for being some of the most dangerous lizards on earth uh, only because keepers have gotten these animals straight out of the wild. Uh, you see those tongue flicks? That's interesting. Um, those tongue flicks right there. Right now she's a little curious so I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand right here. Let's see what she does. She's curious. Let's see if we can build some trust to her. But anyway, these guys come from Papua New Guinea. They call them the tree crocodile. They are notorious for having the longest teeth of any lizard on earth. They'll give you the worst bite you could possibly get along with a Komodo dragon. In some ways worse. Um, they do have bacteria in their mouths. Uh, all animals do. Shh, you're okay. Um, and all monitors have a slight degree of venom. All lizards, in fact, even iguanas, very mild, uh, but their saliva can be toxic uh, in, and have somewhat uh, anticoagulating uh, properties to it. So blood will continue to flow from a wound uh, if, you're, if you are, in fact, bitten by them. Now, the worst thing about getting bit by these guys would be the tendon damage because the teeth are so long. So after being with Tom, it is important to get these animals to trust me. Uh, I've been seeing that. Um, because I don't want to have to have a negative experience for them every time I come in here and have to put her into the heated box. So what I'm trying to do is just get her used to me. Um, and this is all I do. I spend time with her. Um, so it's very important to do that. Now she's fixated on you, Matt. Yeah. So it is a little bit more challenging because she perceives herself as being in danger because there are two human beings in here and she's just kind of... When she opens her mouth like that, like she just did, I can really see her teeth. So it is a little unnerving for me, but um, we're gonna let her do her thing. 
because I do want this lizard to become an animal um, that can tolerate our presence, can hang out with us, and just be uh, peaceful here um, with us at the camp. Um, it would be amazing if we could make her into another Slinky or even better, a Bill. Uh, Tom Crutchfield's good old lizard. And I think, I think right now Slinky hears us. Oh, look at this, guys. Pan over there, look at that. Slinky actually hears me talking and wants to see what's going on. How curious, isn't that amazing? That is amazing. It's amazing, he hears my voice and just wants to see what's happening. And that's the kind of relationship I want from all of my monitors. I want them to appreciate me, know that I'm their friend. Uh, we love Slinky, we've done so much work with him. But you know, we've got to spend the time and that's, that's what it boils down to guys, is I have not spent the time just interacting with the animals. I've been go, 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 making videos. I thought, you know what, let's just come in here and spend time with the animal and give her an experience with me that isn't one of me putting my hands on her, isn't one of me feeding her. It's just being in the enclosure, being part of her world. Um, that is gonna go a long way to making her feel comfortable with my presence. We have to build that trust that I'm not gonna just grab her every single time. So I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna put it right here. A little bit of a hiss. There we go. I wanted to see my hand. And these animals are smart. Um, as long as I don't reach in and try and grab her, I don't suspect she's going to come at me. Now the other issue is this animal is blind in one eye, much like Lagatha, um, our croc monitor that we had, who passed away from uh, having actual um, problems with her ovaries. She went septic. She was blind in one eye as well. So you got to be really careful about how you approach this one. You want to approach her from the side she can see. She doesn't even know Slinky's over there. Um, Slinky knows she's over here, I can tell you that. He's always aware when there's a gal close by, even if she isn't uh, the same species as Slinky, he's always interested. So it's really cool though that these animals are here. And the key about why I love this custom cages uh, enclosure is because it's large. Large to give them enough room to move, but more importantly, I can sit in it. I can be a part of this environment. So I'm really happy about that. So I think what we'll do, look at it, she keeps on opening her mouth, but she's fine. Good girl, yeah. Maybe if you just, you know, sometimes you just talk to them, let them know the sound of your voice at the volume you speak so they're used to it. Uh, just really cool situation. Slinky you, knows your voice for sure. Oh, uh, Slinky knows my voice. And that's what I want. Uh, I would love for Lulu to get that same sense of ease. Um, and when you're really up close to her, you can really see it. In fact, I'm gonna ask you to pass me the camera. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna show everyone under her neck. She's got these really pretty, she's got these really pretty um, lines that are just visible under her neck. I don't know if you guys can see them. Really, really pretty. Uh, how there's that yellow and then the black. And then we're gonna have you squat down, Matt. Just squat down so you make yourself smaller. And we'll just get her relaxed and see what we can do. But you can see how gorgeous she is. Isn't that beautiful? Just a beautiful animal. So I'll just bring this back to you nice and gentle like. And then, oh, let's see. I'll just gently come over here nice and slow. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to spend too much time, but she doesn't like when we're up above her. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you're all right. You're okay. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna hang out a little bit and then we're also gonna go into Chase and Diamond's enclosure and we're gonna spend some time with them as well. Um, just be in there, like I said, not feeding them, not touching them. Just giving them a little one-on-one um, -on -one with me. What we wanna see is we wanna see her tongue flicking a lot more. Right now she's nervous. So once that tongue starts flicking, that means she's more curious. Hey girl. So I'm gonna allow her to do what she wants. I'm not gonna corner her or do anything like that. Very, very nice. And little by little, what I'll do over the weeks is just continue to do this. Just come hang in here. I'll feed her. 
um, on some visits I'll feed her, some visits I'll just come in. So eventually she starts learning this program. And this is how you start to tame them. This is kind of like the behind the scenes in between the episodes. What exactly, exactly. I just wanted to do an episode where I'm showing you guys some of the process that may be a little tedious for um, for for some of us, you know. A lot of us, um, I, I think the, the cool thing about this channel is it's made up and comprised of a lot of really passionate reptile keepers. So seeing this stuff may not be as boring to some of you as the lay person. Um, but I think, you know, showing you just these little moments, let her make her noise because that noise is to warn me. That noise is saying I'm not comfortable with you moving around or getting close. So I'm listening to her. I'm sa I'm right here. I'm only about two feet. My hands are only about two feet from her. Um, I haven't tried to move closer to her. I want her to feel like she's giving us a good enough warning. Uh, she feels all right. But again, this is the beginnings of that kind of interaction. So very good. There we go. Um, I'm going to shut the lid and we're going to move on and we're going to go see Chase and Diamond, the other two, because I, as I said, I really want to give them this experience because if I can have those guys be as cool as Bill, that'd be amazing. And part of the thing I like about listening to Tom and talking with Tom Crutchfield is, and even Elijah, his grandson, is it's really about watching the animals, spend time with the animals. They teach you everything they need to know just by you watching them. You have to be enough of a, uh, it's almost like a cipher. It's almost like a riddle that needs to be um, figured out how they communicate. Obviously, they communicate by hissing. They communicate by puffing up, a lot of nonverbal stuff. The curled tail, that's how you know they're nervous. But once that tongue gets flicking, like I said earlier, they're really letting you know that they're no longer in a state of uh, concern or stress. So she's looking good right now. She's just relaxed. Well, she's not quite relaxed. That's that's not true. She's still puffed up and uh, not flicking enough. But I think that was a good 10 minutes of interaction with her. So now let's go ahead and close this gentle so she feels secure in her box. It's okay. You're okay. We'll just close this nice and easy. Uh, and let's go hang out. Watch your head when you get up. Let's go hang out with Chase and Diamond. Um, pretty cool, though necessary okay this is the part of the job if you will of keeping reptiles that has to be done and i figured i'd show you and then of course um i did the same thing with slinky and you guys know exactly how well slinky has become uh, a friend of mine uh trusting of me and, and that's the key guys uh is building the trust so a lot of our, oh, there we go. I didn't even see, that was my fault. Oh. I should have watched it. All right, don't get that camera right up close because we want him to calm down too. Um, so I'm gonna go spend some time. That's Bill, uh, excuse me, that's not Bill. That's, that's Chase, I'm thinking of Bill. So these guys are also, it's, it's late afternoon. So it's real hot. So let's see, oh guys, check this out. Oh my out. God. Look where she is. She is right up there, okay. So what we're gonna do. Wow. Yeah, what we're going to do is I'll have you go in first and you're going to walk straight through. So the tail's all the way down here. All the way down there? Okay, yeah. good. So what I want you to do is very deliberately and quickly, yep, just move you. all the way to that platform. Right in. You got to go around this way. There you go. Right in. All the way in. Walk right in. Very good. Good job. So now I'm going to come in and just hang out. There she is. Now she's also very shy at the moment, but she's higher up than me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to keep talking. Hey, what's up, Chase? Hey, Chase. All right. And I'm just going to stand here and just relax for a little bit. This is the first time I've come in and had them not be in the hide or on top of it. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So it's late afternoon. The sun's shining in the perfect spot for them to both enjoy this uh, last few hours of basking. Um, but you can see that uh, Chase is not quite as large as Bill, but he is still an see. adult male. He will get much bigger. Um, he, and I can hear her above me. Yeah, she's she's, she's definitely not. So let's go ahead, show you guys. He's a little backlit, but there we are. There is Chase. Okay, good boy, Chase. And then right up here is Diamond. 
surprised she's that chill with well she's up higher she's she's nervous she's really nervous but the fact that she's higher is okay but look at that tail tail is curled up so again his tail's curled too and he could give me a good whip if he wanted so i'm just gonna relax hey buddy hey buddy we're just hanging out here pal we're just relaxing no big deal he hasn't hissed or anything which is a good sign um he's probably curious as to like well why are you here you're not grabbing me and you're not bringing me food so it's kind of like what what are you doing so uh right now what i'm doing is just this being in close proximity to him and uh checking him out here because a little he's he got a little nervous there's that tongue flicking come on you okay you okay i'm gonna put my hand right here. oh we well, gotta be careful if he comes at me i gotta move because i do not want to get bit by him What's that? Hand you the camera. Hand you the camera. All right, here we go. So I'm just kind of, I startled him a little bit. Hey man. That's it. And just like are, spending time with the pet. That's it. You just gotta build become, trust. You gotta become part of their routine. And right now, the only routine they know is that I come in and I feed them or I come in and I have to grab them and put them in the heat box because it's been cold the last few weeks, but now it's warm. So I can just kind of be here and just be, this is a new kind of um, experience for them, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna be real careful with my movements. Yep, just slow and deliberate. And then like if I just show them my hand right here, keep that fist, he knows the difference between me Easy does it. He knows the difference between me. And in fact, you know, Tom often says, like, I shouldn't react like that. I have to just mm -hmm. not react. So it's a learning for both of us. And it's funny because there'll be some people who say, uh, you know, you really should be more brave. And the yeah. reality is, is that these animals can really hurt you. So And you should give them that respect. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I think. So again, I don't want to force him to do anything at the moment. It's it's really better when they are curious about you and they choose to come to you. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Now he is kind of cornered here also, which is never a good thing. So it's like if you just move over this yeah. way a little bit, I know that backlighting sucks, but yeah. it is what it is. Um, I just want to hang out with them a little bit more. I'm going to go open their box a little bit because the door sometimes closes a little. So let's move that. And they've been pretty good about going back into their box at night. So that's cool. Just you be careful. We don't want to get the camera person uh, nailed. But it's uh, it's really cool. Just, let's see, I wonder how close he let me get to his tail there. So he sees my hand. It's not moving though. Nope, not yet. Just and to be clear, that's about Whoa. three plus feet of <laughs> tail coiled up yeah, there. Yeah, that is. What are you mad at? Now he's a little curious. What are you mad at? Whoa, he thinks I have food actually. That's what it is. That's scary. Yeah. All right, hold on. It's not food. Your hand not is not food. food. My hand is not food. Not Easy boy. All right, so that is definitely interesting. Feed response behavior. Well, I don't know if it is. Let's just see if he'll. I'm gonna just go for it. Keep my hand here. The tongue can't hurt me. It's the teeth. Hey, guy. I'm not food. I'm not food. I'm thinking he thinks you are food. Well, let's just be quiet. I'm not food. You're smart. Just keep letting him kind of let him come to you. Right. Let him flick.
Diamond seems very chill. If I keep my hand here, he can smell it, but it's not directly in front of his face to where he can nail it. That was my fault. Mm. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. That's Chase. Good man, good man. I want him to actually smell my hand with his tongue. So they smell with their tongue? Well, it's a... Like... They're getting chemical cues, which is what the smelling is. The caiman lizard was sticking his they're, tongue out of yeah, the water. Yeah, there's a specialized organ, the Jacobson's organ, and that's actually helping him decipher certain other cues that we can't pick up as human beings, but snakes and lizards can because they have that organ. So there are little chemical cues that they'll flick out, they'll taste the air, they'll actually be able to taste you and say, is this something that, you know, I've eaten before, is, you know, maybe I'm giving off pheromones, there's all kinds of things they're able to read that we are not. So when I say smell with his tongue, ah, he's tasting the air, and then that organ at the roof of their mouth is processing it. It's just a sixth sense, literally. He can feel, he can hear, he can see, he can taste, uh, you know, and he can also taste the air uh, with, his, with his tongue. So again, here's my hand. I just want him to kind of see his tails curled up a little bit when he heard my voice. Got a little bit nervous. I could see his eyeball focusing in on my hand. Oh yeah, his tail underneath. Yeah, see I it underneath. See it, yeah. it's, it's hard yeah. to see from the camera angle, but I can see oh, it. Oh, and of course there's a phone call. And it's the missus. Pause that real quick. All right, we handled that. So, hey buddy. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. Come on, man. Just, I just want to lick. Just, just a, a lick. touch. Just a touch. Hey buddy. His tail curled up again. I'm watching his tail. I'm watching him. Yeah, I can just about see it, but there's He's no way at, yeah. it can be seen on camera. But the tail, which is just over those two first branches, just kind of... It curls and yep. then it relaxes. He hears my voice and relaxes. He's I also see it curl. watching my feet. You see my feet mm -hmm, move? Mm -hmm. He's watching that. Hey, Chase. Hey, buddy. Diamond is very chill. Yeah, she's relaxed because we're not paying attention to her. Hey, buddy. So... He just sees that I want him to flick, flick, flick. And I am perspiring right now, you know, and I don't want to take my, I know it's easier when I talk right to the camera, you can hear me better, but it's hard to take my eyes off him when my hand's over there. Um, but anyway, see, I moved back his tail. Hey bud, hey man, we're okay, we're okay. Um, I do believe these animals have an intelligence to them. Um, I've always said that about monitors after seeing what we saw with Tom Crutchfield, mm -hmm. amazing. And to be honest guys, I'm happy with this um, because again, I haven't done this a lot at all. So just getting in here and spending time with them is going to be important and of course you'll see the progress um, as these videos continue, but this is just step one. So step one is just being here next to him so that he can trust me and get used to me close by. Um, so that's that's how it goes. All right, buddy? All right. I really would love to have a breakthrough. Could but, you put your hand underneath the first branch? Um, I was thinking of that, but then it I might want to do that. Give a visual separation from your body. Well, I don't want that either because... Because then it looks like food. Exactly. Yeah, that's I, I want I him to see that it's attached to my body. Yeah. But I think we've done good. I think that was nice. Let's go ahead. So, oh yeah, do you, are you no? I'm just, one? I'm just saying we got to be careful opening right. it because yeah, we're just gonna her tail is in the way of the so. right. Okay. But the door so, opens out, so we're good. It does. So we'll have you. See you later, guys. All right. Now let's go. And just in case you're wondering, let's go on over and talk with or visit with the Slinkers because Slinky. And I had the exact same relationship. Um, really? Yeah, very nervous. Never very would concerned. have guessed that. Yeah. That was, Slinky and I kind of grew into each other. And yeah, here we go. Let's get him here. Oh, here he comes. He thinks he's getting fed. 
So it's first it's a run. You're you're fine. First it's a run. I actually trust Slinky at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Oh yeah, you're tough. I know. I know. He does not like being kind of backed up on. Give me, move that tail. Move that tail. Come here. Give him some pets. Oh, he is such an awesome lizard, though. He loves to. He corn. does. Once you come on back over this way, we'll get him back over. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Never mind. Let's just see. So this is the kind of the, the cool part of Slinky, is I would come in, he lived in a much smaller enclosure, and I would just allow him to do exactly what he's doing. This is what I want to build up to with Chase Diamond and Lulu, is allow him, is allow him the option to come over to me. And even at Slinky's size, I could reach in, I could grab him if I wanted. Um, right now, whenever if two things happen, remember friends? He's either getting fed or moved into a um, into a heated shelter when I walk in this door. So we're allowing him to understand there's no food right now, and this is just a hangout session. Just a social call. That's it, exactly right. And um, we're allowing him to kind of decide if he wants to interact with me. And I like giving the animals that option. Look at this, isn't that amazing? So this is what we're trying to work for. Um, and And just like, you know, um, Stacy Crutchfield has that incredible um, relationship. Oh. <laughs> you got to get a, a little whip from Slinky if you're talking too loud behind him. Um, but anyway, just like Bill and Stacy Crutchfield, um, you know, we want to get things dialed in with all the monitors here so that we can have a nice, safe interaction with all of them. Very, very cool. Again, a lot of it has to do with, you see how he does, even at this point in time, or so many years in, Slinky just does not like when people are behind him. So he's, he's cocked and ready to go. But when he's coming head on, no drama. Right, buddy? No drama at all. So, you know, guys, look, here's the thing. I'm not like Kevin McCurley from Nerd. I don't have the same amount of time spent with monitors like Kevin does. But, you know, sometimes you have to learn, you borrow a bit from him, from Tom, uh, and then also from things that I've learned on my own. And just being in here and interacting with them is important. And now I'm gonna be on the business end of that tail again. He really likes you, he doesn't does he? He does always wanna come say hi to me. Well, you're new and they're yeah. curious. And your shoes look tasty. Anyway, friends, that's what we had going on today. So interesting interactions. You can see the difference, really, um, how the, quote, tame lizard, like Slinky, deals with us in his enclosure, and then the new lizards, the croc monitors, and how much work I've got to put in for them. So it's a labor of love. It's about allowing those animals the opportunity to spend time with you, but I think at the end of the day, we're gonna have really cool, a very cool experience. And I know if I sit here, I'll probably get mailed. Let's see, good boy, Slinky. Oh, oh, well, that's good. Well, that was nice. Thank you for not whipping me, boy. Anyway, guys, just wanted to share with you some of the more tedious things I have to do. Some of the more low energy vibes that have to be. But that's important. It's very important, I love it. And now he's gonna go slink on off into his beautiful aquascape ecosystem. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think. How do you tame your animals? Do you have monitors? Share in the comments below. What have you done? You're gonna get hit. Oh, he just cocks and gets ready. You don't wanna get hit in the face by that tail. See you guys.